I don't think all is lost, which is the point of me talking about this today is because the arc proves that we will eventually get there. It's we're in the midst of it. It's hard to see when you're growing what's happening and things are happening very quickly. And what is it? It's 2022 and we're still in the end of this cross of planning moving into, I mean, it's happening now, right? Human design reveals who you are energetically and who you came here to be. I'm Dana, human design specialist. And I'm Haley, the human design newbie. Listen in as we explore how leaning into your authentic self is your ultimate path to success. Today, we're diving into... What the hell's going on in the world right now? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, it's going to take seven years. (laughs) Yeah. Well... I've been thinking about this and like I told you before we hopped on, I don't know really what to title this episode. Maybe I'll figure it out as we talk. Um, because there obviously with what's today that we're recording today is June 26, 2022. Mm-hmm. And we are obviously here in the United States and we just had the, the big reversal of the Supreme court, Ruling on Roe versus Wade, which upheld the constitutional um, right to abortions, basically, mm-hmm. you know. So safe and, I mean, safe and legal abortions. Yeah. So this isn't going to be an abortion debate. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> Although I think we agree, we're not going <laughs> to we debate on that anyhow. But <laughs> <laughs> what it is, what I've been thinking about a lot is how, in conversations I've been having with people everybody feels really just um, concerned, angry, Mm -hmm. worried about what the fuck's happening in the world. And I know that you hear in conversation or just people talking all the time. It's like, we're, we're screwed, you know, like the world's Mm -hmm. going to hell. That's how I feel. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that's really great to hear. Well, um, (laughs) Well, that's why I wanted to talk about what we're going to talk about today, because I hope to shed a little hope out there. And, you know, your cousin who lives with us, who's 17, Mm -hmm. really doesn't hold much hope for the world, which is really, really sad to hear that the generations like yours and even younger than you, hers, are like really concerned. But Mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of the way of the world has always been that younger generations are like you guys are idiots what are you doing which we are we are so one second we should also mention apologize for any uh extra sips you hear today on the podcast (laughs) i may not be able to edit them all out but this is sunday morning and we're having a coffee together we're having a little coffee talk so it also felt like this might be a little more conversational but also hopefully inf- informational and inspirational. <laughs> I hope so. I need some on this Sunday morning. It is true. We all do. And, and I needed some sense too. Now. Okay. So a lot of people, not a lot of people, some people who know me, <laughs> maybe a lot. Of people, <laughs> usually when I, I will get right in there with everybody else bitching about what is happening. Like I'm mm-hmm. pissed. I'm angry about the general state of things, which like I said, here in our country, I don't feel it's as bad in other parts of the world. Um, But I don't know for sure, because Mm -hmm. I don't live there. It's not my experience. But I do know that, you know, we're really struggling in this country with getting along with each other. But also, I feel that the main problem in this country really ties back just to our um, foundational roots, which are basically like fundamental Christians that (laughs) couldn't get along somewhere else. They came over here, (laughs) start stirring up trouble. That is a very generalized view. But we were founded by, um, you know, people that the Puritans really. Yeah. I mean, Um, they, they left for religious freedom. 
I know it's so ironic, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> but that's this seems to be what we hear all the time now. Is like, especially in the Congress and, and generally the GOP, when they pass a law, they pass it like, you know, they give a title to the bill like it's something really positive for America, but it does the exact opposite. <laughs> you know, like yes. ensuring women's rights to something, and then it just takes all their rights away in the bill. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? But anyway, so getting ahead of myself, because we are going to be talking basically just about us here, but I think it applies to the whole world. But like I said, we can only speak from our own experience, right. essentially. Yeah. So that being said, before we jump in, because I want mm -hmm. you to be able to contribute to this conversation as well like what has been going through your mind in the last several days as a 25 year old woman living in the united states um well when i first learned that they when i when, when i first learned that they overturned roe v wade you texted me about it and i was in the gym and so i was just like fuck this and then <laughs> um and then i came back and i was like making lunch and i was just thinking about it and i just started crying because i was like this is horrible like so many people are going to be affected by that mm -hmm. and like and like it's usually the marginalized and poorer communities that are more affected by it and mm -hmm. I was like this like how can they tell me what I can do with my own body like and we how, couldn't even how tell them to wear a mask <laughs> yeah like <laughs> and the hypocrisy so, yeah yeah mm -hmm. and so then from there it's just kind of like really sad and mm -hmm. frustrated and just kind of disappointed mm -hmm. do you feel like it's settled what do you mean like it's a done deal settled like they're not going to be able to get it to go back the other way do you have any kind of hope i mean and i hadn't really thought about that but i think i think we will be able to get it mm -hmm. back the time frame though i don't see mm -hmm. is it'll be a while, I think, which is really sad. And I think it's important to note that from your perspective and mine, that it's not even, you know, and here's the thing about people who uh, support the pro-life movement is that, you know, I'm, I'm in a sense pro-life too, in the sense that, you know, I believe in everybody having a chance and everything like that. However, um, you know, this is an abortion, a right to an abortion was never anything that like, it's not because I just want to you nearly go out and get knocked up and have abortions like that. Yeah. I feel like that's the judgment that gets passed on so mm -hmm. many women from the one side is that it's just this lazy, irresponsible way of contraception, even though they don't want to provide other contraception either. But um, when the vast majority of abortions are really just horrible circumstances for women and mm -hmm. it's some of the worst things that have ever happened to them in their lives and mm -hmm. yes there's exceptions to every rule but i mean i grew up catholic so it was a <laughs> no you would never do anything like that so sin. But, but i grew up in a uh i grew up in <laughs> oh, rebelliousness in the 80s <laughs> and stuff and there may have been some premarital sex maritable premarital maritable sex, <laughs> she says to her daughter but um that was one thing that would always, you know, be like, oh my God, what if I ever did get pregnant? That would be horrible because honestly, I didn't know if I'd be able to do it, you know, to have an abortion, even though it was my mm -hmm. legal right to it. So I know it's not a thing women enter into lightly. You don't just go like, oh, I'm going to go get an abortion today. I don't want to yeah. do this anymore. Like, no. Yeah. But the knowing that you would have the choice is what's important. But also yeah. what it boils down to now, I think, is it's just ridiculous that in all the advancements in our culture for women to just like take rights away that we already had which is so un-american we don't take yeah. away rights we already have we grant new rights but we don't take them away and uh <laughs> but <laughs> anyway so laying the groundwork of why we brought this topic up because it's just what everybody's thinking about it's what i'm thinking about and it seemed really unusual to talk about something else than to maybe try and offer a perspective how I see things and how a lot of people 
in circles that I tend to frequent see things about what's happening on the bigger global universal scale in the world. So what that means is we're going to talk a little bit more today about kind of how astrology has influenced our lives. And because that is a component of human design, Mm -hmm. what that means for us as we're moving forward and we're moving through this really turbulent times because astrology is one of those things that is it real? I don't know. I mean, it's worked for people and I'm going to get into a little bit of this history and it's just like the same kind of thing. Like is love real? Do you believe in love? Do you believe in God? These are things that can't be scientifically proven, but they are things that we all experience and understand and, and kind of accept and accept and astrology is one of the, and it is, you know, there's, it is sort of, it, well, it's kind of a science, you know, because it is mapping the stars and the cosmos mm-hmm. and everything. Um, it's endured over the thousands of years that we've been here. Yeah. So there must be something here that human yeah. beings can um, glean from it. And yeah. And if from. you ask some random person on the street, they probably know what their, uh, their sign is. astrological <laughs> sign is. Yeah. <laughs> So first of all, okay, so a little background, how astrology, you know, came about. I mean, it's, it's, it's old. I don't know. But Was it also downloaded? No, no, but it did not come about because of a need for entertainment or anything like that it, or fortune telling, but it came about as a need for survival because mm-hmm. you think about these ancient peoples, they would, um, as they started to become more aware of their environment and we started Mm -hmm. to evolve, you know, there needed to be some sort of, um, they started to notice like fluctuations and, you know, when it's daytime, nighttime, really simple things, measuring of time. Um, and then it would go longer of like, because, you know, when they stopped, I guess when we started doing the whole, uh, I don't know what era that was the hunter and the gatherer and then agriculture started to come Mm -hmm. about you know you were you would have to start to learn the patterns in nature and the fluctuations in nature and they they didn't have to be moving or running as like traveling so much so they kind of had like Mm -hmm. they were like i guess more had more time on their hands quote unquote so they're like what's up in the sky (laughs) Yeah. Well, like they said, yeah, once they stopped having to hunt as much and they started to depend more on staying in one place and gathering tribes and communities, it was a matter of, okay, we start to notice the weather, first of all, Mm -hmm. and they would notice, of course, patterns in the weather and flooding and when, you know, waters would rise and recede, all those things. And so they would start noticing, of course, the sun, the movement of the sun, the moon. I mean, we've seen this throughout time, all the um ancient <laughs> ruins and stuff out there that definitely still to this oh, yeah. day can amaze us with their technology of what they understood about map and in the world in the universe but so um so they just started noticing cycles and then they 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 kind of tie it back to the early civilizations in early um Babylon astrologers in Babylon started mm. to notice as they started to look at the night sky they noticed the patterns that would occur there would be like of course the moon uh going mm-hmm. through its cycle every 28 days but then they would start to see regularly occurring patterns in the constellations and everything and they also started to notice the the whole phrase as above so below is that they started to notice that say you know because a lot of times astrology was not for the common man (laughs) you know like the kings and the rulers had astrologers to help advise them because they were the ones that were aware of the patterns in the skies sometimes reflected the patterns within us below so as an example they would notice that there would be behaviors in us that match up with different um you know constellations i guess or placements in the sky so examples would be if you know the astrologer noticed that there was a time when there seemed to be more infighting or disagreements or aggressions um they might have made a note in the sky that you know the 
Mars, which is the fiery planet, a lot of fiery energy, mm -hmm. was in the sign of Aries. Because we're not going to go back and tell you all about how all the uh, signs and everything came about, because <laughs> this is a very simple podcast. But so maybe he would note that Mars, as he looked in the sky, was in the constellation of Aries, which is also a very aggressive energy and kind of fiery and war. And he would make a note of it. And then he would just start to watch the patterns and say, okay, well, the next time it was in this constellation, what happened? Or even when Mars moved into different signs, mm -hmm. what was the energy happening on the planet with the people around them? So mm. um, I thought that was really interesting to think about. They just, over time, just kept the observations of how things on Earth tend to occur when things were occurring in the skies that they could, um, you know, plot out. So I thought that was interesting. So that is, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't yeah. have known that that they were. I wouldn't have thought they'd been like, oh, that up mm -hmm. there in the sky, and that's down here. That mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I just wouldn't have never learned that in my history books. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> astrology. Uh, yeah, and so they could see that and this is how they became trusted advisors and stuff to the king because they started to know what the patterns were going to be and um i mean and it's always changing you know the, mm -hmm. the sky there are these cycles that um are consistent but also you know just things change fluctuate retrograde and, stuff yeah <laughs> wobbles yeah and so um so they could they, like kind of start predicting quote unquote for the kings well what yeah i mean i don't i think when it, it gets tricky when you go into predictions because people like to think of predictions as like hooey and made up but mm -hmm. i mean if you're looking at the scientific process they make predictions of what they think might happen based mm -hmm. on what they know has happened that kind of prediction of like yeah. pay attention you might be and that's what happens when you get your monthly forecast yearly forecast you know the astrologers that write those are just like this is what is scheduled to happen in the cosmos and we yeah. know from all the past information that this can you know stir up certain energies in people and and it's really cool because it's always changing, you know, like we've seen with the human design chart, how many different iterations there are of a human design chart. Mm -hmm. It's the same with all the different variables in the, in the sky, um, depending on where we are, where the stars are, what signs are in. It's just this huge, deep science that I cannot <laughs> ascribe myself to, but I nonetheless have always been fascinated by it in my life. And, um, I think that I'm going to tap into my friend Romina as mm -hmm. our future um, astrologer informer here of the podcast. As we move forward, I'd love to have her on here. And she's starting to <laughs> know her. She told me her mother and her grandmother were also like astrologers. And I was like, what? I didn't know that about you. <laughs> like, she's so interesting. And she likes to use it. She's been doing a lot on social media lately. Um, kind of giving us the heads up of what's coming of what you know you could be looking at and so but i i just wanted to point out that we i would say that mapping stars is more predictable than trying to predict the weather <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know it's like i mean isn't it funny we accept prediction of weather patterns based on conditions that are favorable for certain things to happen but we don't know until it happens right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're like it could be very cool there could be a tornado over here you know conditions they always say conditions are favorable right mm -hmm. well that's the same thing in my mind of what astrology does conditions are favorable for people to be getting really stirred up and yeah. when i worked in the schools we saw how the weather affected children the teachers would all just be like oh my god it's so windy today these kids are going to be crazy <laughs> it was weird <laughs> windy windy days really got kindergarten age children really riled up <laughs> <laughs> even if they were inside all day i never understood it that's but, interesting uh -huh. but also um i know you've heard of this in probably your true crime podcast where the term lunatic came from yes because of the full moon it's Mm -hmm. It's like always the weird things happen. Mm -hmm. Things get a little more extra weird, extra crazy. 
Yeah. And so, and I think it's just, you know, when we, we've talked about it before of our, our, um, awareness centers and in, in the human design, um, framework, how we moved from this primal awareness to this mental awareness. And we've spent so much time in this yeah. mental awareness that we tend to disregard our more instinctual intuitive mm -hmm. awarenesses, which I think are more tied to the energies of the cosmos and everything that's around us. And so it's as we got more scientific and quote unquote logical and rational, we lost touch with all this stuff and it became this junk science, hooey science that rational, logical people don't pay attention to, but it's coming back around because mm -hmm. there's some things that we need to find a better understanding, like something to anchor to <laughs> and something that's, you know, been around for thousands of years that helps explain some yeah. of this stuff. I think it's valuable. So the point being with all that is that what is happening in the cosmos has an effect here on earth and in human mm -hmm. design, we've talked about how the neutrinos, those little teeny, tiny, 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 smallest little informing particles are passing through all the everything. planets, everything, and they're coming through us and so there is an effect seen mm -hmm. there with us so i think there's definitely an influence there so one thing they talk about in human design they started talking about it a year or so ago <laughs> maybe when i started paying attention to it they may have been talk i'm sure they were talking about it before that talking about this uh new paradigm and this shift this mutation that's coming up in 2027. Mm -hmm. it's a big it's it's a big event. Well, <clears throat> it's kind of like globally how everybody was so freaked out about 2012. Remember when they were like mm, the Mayan calendar yeah. and everything? Well, in in these circles, I think the vo this may be from the voice that there was going to be this mutation uh, in our system. How we had one in 1781. We had when we discovered oh, the outer the planets. heart, right? That was when the heart split. Yeah, our energetic system mutated, it changed. Mm -hmm. And I said, there's another one coming in 2027, which, like we talked about before, I don't think there's just a switch. Right. There's things leading up to it and things that will happen after. And, because it's in the cosmos and things move slowly out there. Yeah. And there's also been talk about probably since the 60s well before the <laughs> 60s moving into this age of aquarius which has been on everybody's radar in the last two years they remember they were talking about it a lot uh i think it was december 2020 when all those big planets lined up in the sky it was like saturn jupiter um and maybe oh, I can't remember the other one. They they were all like zero <laughs> degrees Aquarius. It was like it hadn't happened in a very long time. Well, welcome to 2020. <laughs> yeah, the end of 2020. Um, otherwise known as the speediest and slowest two years in history. Oh my <laughs> between god! Between 2020 and 2022, I'm like, what happened to 2021? Like, oh, I don't seriously. Even know. <laughs> so, the planets do bring us information, and it says. And human design that it's part of this program it's programming it's what's happening as the um as the neutrinos pass through and this is just human design terminology from raw that he said this is what the program wants you to learn and in his weird speak like he did um mm -hmm. but basically saying that we're being informed by all these things um and we're here to learn we're here to grow we're here to expand because I mean, we are living things and in nature, it's expanding. The universe is expanding. Everything is mm -hmm. always reaching to expand and to grow. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like to anchor myself to is that there's going to be fluctuations. There's going to be ups and downs, but I think the trajectory trajectory is an upward climb. There's going to be growing pains. And in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., he said that the uh, arc of the moral universe is long, but bends towards Ooh. justice, meaning that change takes a long time, but it does happen. And I think that's really part of what we're in the midst of now. So going back to astrology, each planet, including our own, moves at its own speed 
has its own influence and the earth has its own cycles of growth and mm-hmm. expansion and we measure it in on an annual basis and um you know like how it travels around the sun and all this other stuff and then there's also a cycle that's much bigger than that that measures the gradual shift of the earth's axis rotation mm-hmm. okay um this rotation completes a cycle approximately every 25 to 26,000 years. It's something like 25,777 years. There is, it's, they call it the precession of the equinoxes. And if you want more information, you can look that up. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just setting the stage here. (laughs) So there is these, this big cycle of how the earth's axis and all that stuff. And then within that, yes. And then within that, they have these other um, ages, they call it, they've been calling it astrology, which is about every 2100 years, it moves. um, It's, they say it's like a, a background astrology, I can't really explain how they calculate this either. But they we're moving through all these um, ages that correspond with the signs of the astrological wheel but instead of moving in the procession that we're used to like the start of the um the signs the astrological year starts with aries and goes around and ends in in, pisces Pisces, right this goes backwards so this is what you mean when they say that we're moving into aquarius is this Mm -hmm. this is an age yeah so we're moving out of the age of Pisces and moving into the age of Aquarius. Now, the only thing is people disagree of when the actual movement happened or is happening, Mm. but it's somewhere within what we're experiencing right now, which I think is pretty obvious. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's pretty obvious. And so what's interesting to note is these ages all had their own themes. So I I did find real quick what some of these other ages and how they've played out as they look back over time. So it goes all the way back to 8,000 BC to 6,000 BC. It was the age of cancer. Well, I mean, I don't think anybody was writing this shit down back then, obviously, but they're able to, uh, based on when they were starting to notice these things, could look back at our evolution and say, oh, well, this was during that time make sense and i can see like what the what history was happening then right kind of deduce yeah. yeah so they say during that time frame in our human development there was a great emphasis on family and housing and food <laughs> and family Humanity was learning how to like shelter develop dwellings and started to put real emphasis on like kind of like what you're talking about staying in one place <laughs> learning you know to to fish and start to farm and all these other things right is is cancer the one that is um that's the crab obviously Mm -hmm. but when we talked about the signs that was the one that it was the yeah in the shell they just want to be like in their their shell uh and then from 6000 bc to 4000 bc was the age of gemini remember it's moving backwards and this is when language was starting to form and be born and writing became more developed from 4,000 to 2,000 BC, the age of Aquarius, um, which, I mean, not Aquarius, Taurus, age of Taurus, um, it's when art and, you know, they started to, they were starting to have their foundation set of survival and so more of Mm -hmm. a luxury experience, not like we know today, but, you know, maybe doing things not just for survival, but for pleasure as well. So they call it like art and luxury coming into existence. You would see more adornments and you would see the the i mean i don't really know much about prehistoric man but <laughs> i imagine it's like when they started to decorate <laughs> they, they started to keep themselves a little bit nicer well i'm thinking of like the furs and the, <laughs> the cave paintings and maybe making the necklaces and you know like doing things for yeah for an extra to feel pretty extra. yes so then from um here's where it starts to get edgy we start fucking things up <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> so the age of aries remember i said that was a more you know fiery aggressive kind of younger uh-huh. energy from 2000 bc to 21 a.d 
this is when the Greeks, Greeks and Romans reigned. And Shout Aries, out. Aries is a very masculine kind of uh, energy and aggression and power and everything. So there was a little bit of that happening. Just, just a little bit. Yeah. And then, so we're thinking, so 21 AD, so we're getting into what started happening. Who was starting to walk the planet after that? A young man named Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. Was it 30? They say, they say 33 AD he was born, I believe. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> this isn't the Christianity know. Today podcast. <laughs> you were raised Catholic. I was raised loosely Presbyterian. Oh, I was raised Catholic and there was some talk about Jesus. <laughs> they mostly <laughs> want to talk about the Virgin Mary and saints for some reason. But anyways, so then you're looking at the age of Pisces is what we entered into next. Okay. And Pisces is very much about spirituality and all of these, you know, deeper hit things. It's a lot more than that, but this was the rise of Christianity and the rise of um, religiously based power structures um, and just the influence of religion in our power structures. And that's a very loose interpretation of it. But mm -hmm. so you think each one goes about 2000 years. Well, here we are on the precipice of, we are in moving into the age of Aquarius, which is very different from the age of Pisces. The age of Aquarius is more about the power of the individual. Mm. Mm -hmm. So basically Aquarius brings the ideas of turning from institutions and top down, top down hierarchies, which these structures put into place into, like I said, empowering the individual and giving people the freedom to choose based on your own experience and what aligns mm -hmm. with you and not what somebody else tells you to do <laughs> okay oh. aquarius the sign of aquarius is known as like well they kind of like the theme there is like freak the whole let your freak flag fly like it, aquarius is known for being very forward thinking um some things i read about they're almost like <laughs> aliens on earth <laughs> i was reading this one book um can't remember the guy's name, uh, Gaul Sasson, I think is his name, a book, Co Cosmic Navigator, which is a great book, but it's talking about how, you know, there's some people that just love dogs and they love dogs so much. Like they see a dog and they just love them. They want to do everything for dogs, but they just can't be a dog, but they love dogs so much. He's like, it's kind of how Aquarians are with people. <laughs> <laughs> They can never be quite normal like other people. They're just a little different, but they just love <laughs> humanity and they want to do everything they can to help. And that's kind of the theme <laughs> of Aquarius is equality, it's justice, it's individual power. I mean, hello, what is happening right now? Like on a big scale, which what we talked about, what's been happening the last two years, like everything has literally shifted in a big way. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens though, when these new ideas they like I said, there's not just a switch and everybody's like, okay, we're here now. There's that'd be easy. To, yeah. Those ups, those downs, those ups, those downs. We're seriously experiencing that right now, I believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, this new era is ushering in a freedom of choice in your life and your autonomy over your own self and not structures, particularly religious structures mm -hmm. dictating to you. It's also the sign that is associated with democracy oh. because if you think about it, individual empowered yeah. choice, right. Yeah. And, and it's about, um, taking care of the whole unit. Like there's not a top figure telling everybody. And what's really interesting, I was reading right before we hopped on Susan, um, Susan Miller, I used to get her stuff all the time. She's an astrologer. She's been around for a long time. Um, and she, this was written years ago, talking about what will happen in the um, age of Aquarius. There's a lot of technology involved in age of Aquarius. Like they think some of our 
they predict some of our greatest advances with technology and healthcare and all the stuff are going to be occurring. But what I thought was really cool, I was reading something about, and I, I thought it was apropos here. This is, I'm going to read this from her website. She's talking about teams rule down with dictators. And who um, is this again? Susan Miller. She's an astrologist, astrologyzone.com, okay. talking about the age of Aquarius. It says Aquarius is the egalitarian sign of groups and encourages a democratic voice for one and all. Here's what I want to read. Instead of a dictator at the helm of the corporate ship, the model will be more akin to that of a beehive with bees working side by side. It's my human. That's the vision I had too. Shout out. <laughs> the human design hive. Yeah. So, and then she went after that talk about the trend towards working at home. And I guess what I'll do hey. is I'll go. I know. Isn't that weird? I think there's some weird things in this article because it says it was written in 2016. And I don't know if it's a typo that she references 2010 as an upcoming thing. I don't know if that was mm. just a typo because I'm like, well, that happened. Already. But <laughs> Uh, I'll just, I, I will link this article because she was doing a synopsis from something else of what she was reading in like uh -huh. Business Week, what they were saying in the applicable world of what's going to happen with technology. And I think we already see a lot of that starting to happen. Like I said, if this was written in 2016, a lot's happened since 2016. Uh, but Jeez. yeah, talking about, yeah, you're going to have to be like computer savvy. You're going to get left behind because you're going, the average person is going to be working from home and like, Oh my God, the whole world got forced to work at home at once. It was, it's the craziest thing. <laughs> I, I mean, but you know, I think I even talked to you, we talked about this when it was happening, when the pandemic, you know, started and the shutdowns and everything. I was like, I felt the energy of like, this is so important. Like, this is one of these huge events yeah. that is out of everybody's control and is forcing everybody to reevaluate their priorities yeah and, and it was forcing people to actually work together and semi-cooperate <laughs> yeah for a time yeah yeah until the structures <laughs> that are in their dying grasp <laughs> are like no um but to be clear this moving from pisces to aquarius moving from the influence of these religious structures to individual choice or just hierarchies moving into more synarchies it doesn't mean they're completely going to go away. It's yeah. I I don't you know mm -hmm. religion is just not going to vanish. No. There's a lot of there's a lot of good there for a lot of people, um, mm -hmm. their belief systems. But what is going to change is what we decide our new belief systems are going to be, and what we decide um, we want to put our emphasis on. Okay, so moving on to more human design aspects here, and how this is how we're feeling the influence of what's happening right now. So paradigm, first of all, you, you hear this term thrown around, oh, it's a, it's a paradigm shift or a new paradigm. Mm -hmm. I was like, what does that even mean? You know, I'm, I'm a line yeah. one. I got to know what things mean, especially if I'm going to talk on them and mm -hmm. try to explain them. But so a paradigm is basically a way of thinking. It's like accepted beliefs, examples, concepts, that kind of thing. So hmm. when they're talking about a <laughs> paradigm shift, it's a, a choosing a new way of looking at things or doing things replaces the old way of doing things again you see the themes here we're moving from the old through to the new okay, so we talked about those earth cycles 20 some thousand years and then 12 or 2000 years okay so within these larger cycles that we've been talking about in astrology there's also these smaller cycles that last approximately 400 years 411 years to be exact in the oh that they mapped in the human design system and like okay. how we talked about being in the age of aquarius and all the stuff there's a theme in human design it is these 400 some year cycles are ruled by the themes of certain incarnation crosses okay which i don't entirely remember what the incarnation cross is. the incarnation cross for individuals is the the top uh four Right. signs on the conscious and unconscious side it's your conscious and unconscious earth placements and sun and sun sorry sun and earth placements so um it's applying it globally to like the earth where it sits in the cosmos like we were talking about when we're going through the but they're like the the same incarnation crosses as 
like as individuals the individuals okay mm -hmm. yeah same as aquarius age of aquarius, aquarius there's yeah. also okay. okay so basically incarnation cross in your own chart Art. is kind of like the plot outline of your story of like what you're here to to do and learn right because it's, it's like the big overarching mm -hmm. thing yeah it's the energy you you bring forth it says so remember we keep doing this as above so below it's the same mm. here it's on that global scale of as humanity the themes we are experiencing growing through expanding through okay so we are on the precipice here this is that moving into 2027 we are moving mm. into a new incarnation cross in the human design system so we are moving out of the cross of planning and we are moving and that's been since about 1615 we've been in the cross of planning that's which 400 years yeah wow it's like i almost <laughs> just said that <laughs> i know but that that seems like so much longer than 400 years for some reason i know well and think about what has been happening in the last 400 years was the rise of the scientific you know method and thinking and all the different structures that started to get put into place so the gates in this incarnation cross are uh, gate 37 gate 40 gate 9 and gate 16 and so we have been experiencing and learning from the themes in these gates for the last 400 some years and you know it's called the cross of planning it is about building communities and We've certainly been doing that. Uh, the, the 3740 is a channel. Those two gates, mm. they do create a channel. 9 and 16, they are in different um, centers. But the 37 and the 40 do create a channel. And this channel came about during that mutation. But it's all about the will center and the solar plexus. But really, there's a lot of emphasis on the will center, which is all about this material plane. It's about right. having mat material resources. It's about value mm. and worth and money and um, really how we translate value, which up until this point has been, you know, the value of even a human life was how much can they mm -hmm. produce? What are they worth? I mean, we literally and unfortunately still happens in this world, you know, treat people as actual material possessions. They are slaves. So we built this country on slaves and mm -hmm. there's a lot of karma here <laughs> in this country of, of, yeah. yeah, we are the epicenter. I believe the United States really is the epicenter of what we have to change in order to get right because we are the grand experiment. We always have been. We're still, we're so young as a, as I almost said, as a planet, we're so young <laughs> as a nation. We got a lot Some of shit. Some people in the U.S. might think it's a planet. Mm -hmm. yeah, some people are on their own planet, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's called Texas. No offense, Texas. Sorry. That was wrong. <laughs> we live in South Carolina, so we know. Yeah. Like, we know. So yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not some <laughs> quote unquote elite out there bashing the people in the South. I live in the South. <laughs> I've been here for 30 years, so. I've been here my whole life. Yeah, you are a Southern girl. In, in birth only. <laughs> no offense. Sometimes, sometimes an accent. Yeah, I keep saying that. No offense. Um, I guess people are going to have to take offense at what I say eventually, and I'll just you have to get over it. You are voicing your opinion. I am. Because it's been brought to my attention in the last week in talking to my dear friend Romina that my North Node placement is in Aquarius. This is what I'm moving into in this part of my life is Aquarian energy. <laughs> Which is what we are also moving into, right? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes is, I get, I think I get Aquarius and Aries just mixed up in my head because they sound yeah. similar. They do. They are separated by Pisces. One is towards the end and one is towards the beginning of the Zodiac. Shout but, out to Pisces. Yeah. So I'm just going to have to get used to, which is also why I decided we need to talk about this is because I need to start stepping into the energy more of talking about what I really want to talk about. And yeah. for me, a lot of that Very is important. revolves around social issues and the power of the individual and empowering ourselves as individuals to shake this shit up and change it. <laughs> so that's, a, so, okay. 
so this the will center being all about um material things and so how we could how we navigate in this world yes ma'am yeah so like more on the shadow side as they say mm. of the will center could that have been like because i mean in these 400 years we had two giant world wars which were kind of about <laughs> material things basically aren't wars about material things and power yes yeah. i mean for sure now they're saying um in the human design world we're shifting from this um cross of planning into the cross of the sleeping phoenix okay Ooh. and that is more concerned with um creativity through choice and through emotion through feeling and it's about um kind of birth and what do they say well, death yeah, like, rebirth the rising of the phoenix you yeah know? i mean the phoenix rises from the ashes mm -hmm. it's just i really love that the phoenix like idea or i don't even know what it is but like rising from the ashes i just really love it well you are uh a pisces <laughs> right you're a pisces what does that right mean? yes yeah <laughs> what is that supposed to mean well i mean and you had that scorpio what were we talking about your scorpio chiron oh, yeah. i'm scorpio yeah chiron is in scorpio mm -hmm. which is about rebirth or regeneration and like but basically that spiritual, you know, Pisces does have a very deep, you know, these are water signs, deep spiritual nature. It's like hidden down in there. And so the core of you, there is part of you, yes, that very much believes in the transcendence of things. And that's what I think yeah. the Phoenix represents is, and for me, like, I love nothing more. I guess this is kind of a encapsulation of that. I love a redemption story. I mean, that's my favorite oh, kind of story to hear is where someone who you, felt you also love the under the like underdog the yeah. like the really just downtrodden person that's yeah just not friends and no friends and all that you love that story <laughs> I do. yeah you make it sound like i love the suffering i don't love the suffering i love no, no, no. the redemption i love the realization I always, I always remember that mascot show i think it was you were watching <laughs> <laughs> mascot show <laughs> Yeah, you tell me about that kid that stuck oh, with me so much. <laughs> oh, that show, most kids being mascots. Oh yeah, the the the, the one, the unpopular kid, mm -hmm. the the weird one, the like just breaks your heart, young kids. <laughs> yeah, it, it touches me deep. It always has, but that's kind of the same thing. It's like. I guess waking up to your worthiness and mm -hmm. the value that you hold just by being yourself because I think that's what a redemption story is is you think you were all these things and so you acted in a certain way that maybe led mm -hmm. you down a path that led you to do things that weren't in your best interest which which is why I hate the whole cancel culture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you can't do if you and it's a lot of the times it's people's old tweets as like that's what gets people canceled mm -hmm. it's like if you went and read my old tweets you'd be like who is she like <laughs> she's they so were angsty. bad yeah oh they were bad but like i know can you are... imagine if right now on our podcast they're like they get along great and then they go and find your old tweets and they're like oh my god she really hates her mother <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a like, liar <laughs> that was me being an angsty teen like tweeting that like you can't yeah. just cancel someone for something they said if they are still like they said something shitty like seven years ago and they're still mm -hmm. a shitty person mm -hmm. maybe but like it's if evidence. that's not who they are anymore mm -hmm. you can't you can't just cancel someone for that i hate the whole it is i i disagree culture. with a lot of the cancel culture too because again it's someone else trying to tell you how you should feel Mm -hmm. about someone else's behavior or what they did like i i totally believe in voting with your dollars and having your own choice of what you think and when you want to support and that's great but to go on a campaign like you said to try and destroy someone else's um existence for something you disagree with is is not good for whatever cause whether you think no. you're doing you know it's it's ridiculous and I agree with you 100% because it's just like, don't tell me what to think. <laughs> Very strong in me. Don't tell me what to think. <laughs> yeah. You and Presley agree on that one. Definitely. And um, 
Anyway, so <laughs> so basically, as we move from this cross of planning to the cross of the sleeping phoenix, is we're moving from this, um, we, we're redefining for ourselves what it is that we find valuable and what we value um, is going through a lot of crisis right now because obviously we see what's happening and we're learning that measure or we're learning that value is not measured by numbers you know whether that's the numbers on your scale or in your bank account or your follower count <laughs> mm-hmm. you know it's not measured by these metrics you're valuable because you are here and because you exist and every single one of us has a part to play in that we're yeah. not all meant to be known by every person on earth. We're not all Oprah Winfrey, but we all make a difference by being here. We're all here for a reason. Exactly. And I 100% believe that. And so I think we, I don't know if we've talked about this already, but when we are evolving and growing as people and individuals, and we look at the, the, what they call it, the micro level to apply it to the macro, right? It's like small things, us, what's happening within mm-hmm. us um, was something I learned and started to really experience years ago when I first started going down the, I hate using the words, the self personal development journey. Um, so ain't those words sound so. They're, they're very buzzwordy words. Yeah. But basically it was realizing that the more I changed myself without trying to change anyone else, that things just changed around me because Mm -hmm. who I'm being changes. And so how people react to me is going to change and that's Mm going to change things. So as we go through these cycles of growth, okay. So what propels people to change generally? Um, Usually something bad. Exactly. We always have freedom of choice. And mm-hmm. it says in the Course of Miracles that basically the Course of Miracles, you know, it's this um, framework this of redefining the way you think. Like it's basically having a paradigm shift of looking at your mindset and all your beliefs and realizing you don't know anything. But it says there is a curriculum and you could say it's laid out here too. There is a curriculum. We are here to learn for sure really mm-hmm. about the power of that there's just, you know, the power of basically love and that we are all here together and that we all need to love and respect each other. And it says, basically, there is no time frame on when you learn this, but you will learn it eventually. And you can learn it through pain or you can learn it in a different way. (laughs) You can try to fight it, which is what we do, or Mm -hmm. we can choose to make change, which is what I hope to help people with as well. And so it shows this in the human design chart, really through this channel of struggle, but also the channel you have the 1858 of, cause that starts in the root and it's moving towards the spleen is that in order to have that pulse, that creation, cause the root gives off this pulse energy to, um, it's the pulse of life of like to create, to do, to, to be right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, emotions yeah channel 2838 uh-huh. channel of struggle okay but the theme there it starts with gate 38 which they call the fighter which is this you know fierce energy of like fighting for what is right mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and so it carries this energy of knowing what is worth fighting for which is gate 18 right no that's the 28 Oh, is I mean, I mean 28, 38 is this having the energy to fight, but also having the awareness of what is worth fighting for right. in this lifetime. What is it? And then that 1858 starts with the 58 up to the 18 to the spleen is uh, the channel of judgment. And that also carries that energy of, okay, what is it that needs to be fixed? What is it that needs to be refined? It is this process of looking at what we have and what needs to change what needs Mm -hmm. to happen there's a lot of these themes in that root center which we'll do a whole episode on the on the the root center of you've got to start from somewhere to change Mm -hmm. and we start where we are and we move forward where we are we can't and we shouldn't just throw everything away Mm -hmm. right because that's chaos 
Yeah, exactly. And only take and just forget about our whole past and what we've learned and just set out. And so what you see here is this struggle, in my opinion, between this extreme left and this extreme right, extremely conservative, extremely liberal, right? This Mm -hmm. is what they come down to. And extremes in anything are not going to get you anywhere. They do not work. (laughs) Extremes burn out. (laughs) So we can't be so progressive that we throw away everything that has been valuable over time Mm -hmm. for humanity. And we also cannot stay stuck in the same things and never change and move forward. Because that's how things die. Exactly. Stagnation. And government, that's what I learned in my government classes. Stagnation is governments that refuse to change and grow and adapt with the needs of their people. This is when you get fascist governments, communistic things where they want to keep everything the same. Mm -hmm. Which is ironic because the rallying cry of the conservative right is they're communists and they're going to blah, blah, blah. Where it's like, well, actually the path you're going down is, is more that route of telling everybody what to do and how to live their fucking lives, which Mm -hmm. is what they're doing. And so I think why this, other than this pure wrongness of what has happened this weekend of taking away these rights. I mean, the fact that the Supreme Court ruled that it was a constitutional right to be able to fucking carry a gun anywhere you want at any time because of the stupid misread um, Second Amendment. I hate these constitutionals. Um, (laughs) There's value in the Constitution, but it's just a document. I mean... And it was written in 1776. Yeah, but to say that I mean, it's just insane to me that that it is gun like a right to like have a gun and go kill someone if you want to. It's your right. Although they say it's defending yourselves against a tyrannical government. Well, I guess it's a good thing we're all going to have guns. But um, <laughs> we'll take that with a great assault. Um, but because to be clear, I I just want gun control. I mean, mm-hmm. have have a gun. You're we have a couple in the house. We do live in the South. Your dad has a gun. That sounds really bad. <laughs> no, but it's I mean, locked up. It's controlled. Do, yeah. He went under a uh, background check and we and he knows how to safely use it. And he's gotten permits and shit like that to, to carry it. Well, he doesn't carry it, but no. he had a, he has a permit for it. Perhaps um, he does too, but he doesn't carry. No. Yeah, and the only reason your dad did that was when we owned the business that he did carry cash around a lot mm-hmm. for deposits. Um, yeah. He wanted to be safe. So, um, but yeah, the fact that the Supreme Court is so out of line right now to defend mm-hmm. these rights to violence, basically, and then turn around and say that it wasn't written in the Constitution, your right to abortion. Well, no shit. I mean, it also wasn't Women written. Women weren't the- property. Women were property. Women didn't have rights. Everybody was particularly property when the (laughs) Constitution was written. Yeah. You know, I mean, who had rights? White men. That was it. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are are great aspects of the Constitution and there are great amendments that have been made to the Constitution, but you can't, the way that it was, the Constitution, the original Constitution, when it was written, how it was written, the language they use, you can't just take that word for word. You have to take it, see what the fundamental issues and and rights they're aligning in it. And then you have to apply that to to today's world. You can't just take it word for word, be like, well, that's what it says. Yeah. And that's, that's the death of a government. So as Abraham Lincoln said, (laughs) united we stand, divided we fall. And of course he was talking about slavery at the time of making it a um, nationally, um, illegal thing slavery abolishing it here we are with all our advances still stuck in this um old paradigm and because congress is so old well let me just be clear and state that i 100 percent believe we will course correct i don't think all is lost which is the point of me talking about this today is because the arc proves that we will eventually get there 
it's we're in the midst of it it's hard to see when you're growing what's happening and things are happening very quickly and what is it it's 2022 and we're still in the end of this cross of planning moving into i mean it's happening now right Mm -hmm. of of us really having to look at what do we value more do we value corporate profits more than human life do we value corporate profits more than the health of our planet? <laughs> Do we value our well being and our families and the rights of all people to have access to this quality of well being? Which I think, like I said, I think this really, even when Donald Trump was elected, it sucked big time. We know this. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just, think that it was in a way necessary just as i think that when we um incarnate into each lifetime we are here to learn certain things and it's hard and we are challenged but at some level our souls signed up for these challenges not consciously choosing that's not saying that but like as a conscious human being in this incarnation but somewhere our soul in the greater scheme of things said, okay, this is what I want to learn now. This is what I've gathered so far. It's time. And then we get here and they say in the Kabbalah, and then an angel touches the, 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 the infant on the lip right below the nose on the lip. Now you forget everything to learn. That's what they call a Cupid's bow. Oh, it's ancient. Yeah. It's ancient, uh, uh, Judaic. Um, Oh, uh Jewish Jewish mysticism that's what I want to say and that's a layer of Jewish mysticism that's what I want to say and that's where the tree of life yeah um, I just saw that tree of life. right and it's a layer in the human design system it's the channels are um derived from this because it's about how the energy moves through the the person that's what the tree of life is is too but um but I like that imagery of the angel touching the wall mm-hmm, the that's like shh yeah. It's like, okay, here you go. Now you've got to relearn. You've got to remember who you really are, which is what we're doing. So remember we said as above, so below on the micro out to the macro. It's like whatever's happening in us is what's reflected outside of us. And so we're all going through this, these energies at the same time. And I think this is how it's mani- manifesting is this death grip of conservatism. And I feel like there's a lot of unhappiness oh, within yeah. people. Like people just aren't happy. Yeah. And it's, it's so much to think about what's happening right now in the, the bigger picture, because also, you know, we, when we talked about the types and the generator types, you know, the, the worker types, the sacral beings, mm-hmm. the ones who have the energy to just work and build, like that's what we're here to do is work and build. And throughout millennia, that especially in the last 2000 years to certainly in the last 400 years has really been abused of generators well they'll just building they'll just work generators the ones that have built this world um that they didn't want to build they just built it because they didn't know there was another choice you know Mm -hmm. we as what they were told to do yeah we as human beings as a species, I guess, have learned to override what our our bodies and our inner guidance has been trying to tell us for forever, because there was no empowering of the individual. It was structures, institutions, you know, frameworks that controlled everything. And that was necessary. Like, we needed to learn how to organize into governments and we needed to learn how to organize into these structures it's important structure is important (laughs) yeah i love structure (laughs) but again it gets to extremes and i think that's what people are always learning those pushing those boundaries what are the extremes what is valuable what is not and we're just as painful as it is right now and as infuriating and as just disgusting as what you see in the Mm -hmm. i mean i spend half my day just enraged sometimes about the the injustice and the inequality inequality and the just fucking hypocrisy in this country right now 
but I also feel that it is necessary to, to wake everybody up and be like, Mm -hmm. okay, you've had this reset. You've had this time to evaluate your life and see like, what is really important to you? It's like, here is the line step Mm -hmm. back over it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, I just see this ultra conservative movement is just in the death grasp. It's fighting for its life. It's literally like the, the hand to hand combat at the end of the epic drama that you've been watching against (laughs) quote unquote, good and evil. You know, it's like the thing that fights the hardest because it's, is dying. And I think that's what's happening. And I think that we need to, one, focus on empowering ourselves and um, how that spreads out into the world, help as many people as we can to step into this empowered space, but also to um, be open minded and not just, like we said, move so far ahead that we don't value what we've already learned there Mm -hmm. you know things are i don't know that's that's how i see it i wanted to point out i also wanted to just share with you real quick um i reference uh richard rudd's work gene keys a lot Mm because um he calls them gene keys but he um is basically talking about these same energies of these the gates right the hexagrams and his work revolves it's contemplative work but it's really great because he takes these uh gates these keys and he breaks it down to what the shadow is of this archetype this energy what the gift is like the the great the the high and the low energy of it the the well yeah but then also the the highest level the like transcendent state which he calls the city state which that's s-i-d-d-h-i which is a uh, (laughs) sanskrit word for like bliss so he calls it the shadow the gift and the bliss state so Mm -hmm. gate 37 which is in this cross of planning Mm -hmm. i was looking at what the shadow of the cross of of gate 37 is which he calls what is this well, he calls the shadows weakness gate 37. Oh, what is what is gate 37? <laughs> In human design? Yes. Is, um, I like to know the names. So gate 37 in the human design system is called the family. The I Ching refers to it as the family or the gate of friendship. And it's in the solar mm-hmm. plexus, connects to the gate 40 in the will center. But it's... um in the jinkies when he was talking about the um shadow side of this gate he Mm -hmm. calls it weakness and he says that weakness is nothing but a projection of the male psyche onto the female psyche (laughs) calling you know how we view the um women as the weaker sex Uh um and that it represents the inequality between yin and yang forces on the planet, the masculine and the feminine. It represents what we think is weak is not really weak, right? What we think is strong is not really strong in that sense. Um, And he says that we've reached a stage in our evolution in which force and physical strength no longer is what determines our direction, which is how we've done things, right? It's always been Mm -hmm. what survival of the fittest. And, you know, you have to be strong, like whoever was strongest was in charge. That's how kingdoms were built, right? Yeah, because a king skilled the other kings and became Mm -hmm. kings. And now it's wide open to anyone regardless of sex or orientation or anything could be a leader or be powerful or, you know, we're, we're starting to, you know, recognize that. And, um, and because of this shift and this understanding in, um, humanity that we're pushing past these old boundaries and definitions that he says that this is creating all of these social structures to start crumbling because, we are going through the process of reevaluating power and strength. And it's really interesting that I read that this morning. I was like, oh my God. And look what has happened in this past week of trying to tamp that back down. Cause it's not about the unborn babies. No. It's about keeping women 
And like you said, these marginalized groups, Mm -hmm. keeping that boot on the back of their neck. Mm -hmm. Because if it was really about the children, there'd be more resources for after birth. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I heard some guy trying to make that argument the other day. I say, well, you know, this abortion law was... um, banning abortions after 15 weeks. Do you know what the the laws are in like, I think Germany and they're like, yeah, it's like abortions like six or 12 weeks or something like that. And he's like, yeah, that's way more restrictive. But the woman was quick to point out, but yeah, they also have like healthcare. Like there are systems mm-hmm. in place that mm-hmm. support these women and these children, you know, that mm-hmm. there are options for you if you're not in a place to, yeah. um, I saw a, a cartoon that was pretty poignant. It was, it was raining and there was a pregnant mother and her child. And there was also a, a gentleman that was holding an umbrella, but he was only holding the umbrella over the pregnant woman's belly. So then the actual woman and the child were standing out in the rain, but the pregnant belly was under the umbrella. <laughs> so and I was like, crazy. yeah, that sums it up. Yeah. It's, it is it not is about the up. babies. No, like I said, because, and I know it's not men that are pressing, just men that are pressing these laws. I don't understand, but how women can uh, also support, but I'm not to judge that, but it's just, I don't know. But what I do know is that I hope that maybe this conversation can give a little bit of hope. What do you, what do you, what are your thoughts so far about what you've heard? Does this help change anything for you? yeah up until what we just sang and then i'm just frustrated again but oh yeah and there's it's gonna yeah, be that I mean, we are gonna be frustrated because we're we're past the point i guess of just being enraged by things and i was born in 1970 i think roe v wade was settled in 73 was um was when they because they're that's when the the ruling went into place yeah, to I protect mean, it, it abortion was, rights yeah. And, I, know I was saying, you know, it was nearly 50 years that it's been in place. Yeah. So um, that being said, that's my entire lifetime because, you know, three years, no big deal. Um, and so even myself have rested on the laurels of what other women have fought for. And because it goes so far beyond just the right to have an abortion, it goes into all these basic fundamental rights for, for women to be treated as equals of Mm -hmm. men of have the same autonomous rights to self, to Liberty, to all these things, you know, the, the ideals set out in the constitution of all being created equally and that we can be different, you know, there's male and female and all in between, but still have the mm-hmm. same basic rights, which is what this. Because we're all people. Yeah, we're all people. What the age of Aquarius is bringing in, and this is this is the direction we're going through, going to, and so that's what gives me hope because this is, in my mind, settled <laughs> fact <laughs> that it's going to be messy. It. How long is it going to take? I don't know. What can we do to help usher it in? But the facts remain that it will change and we are progressing and we are moving forward. And the fact that we know, at least in this country, that the things that were passed in the last week do not match up with the majority of what people mm-hmm. in this country want. Yeah. And, and we're one... like 51% women. <laughs> yeah. And deep in our dna as americans our ancestors all brought us here we are here to fight for change that's mm-hmm. like what's in our we dna we came over for freedom yes yeah. we, we try to be lazy we try to get by we try to just be okay with it but it's not happening and on that note i'd also like to say <laughs> off the topic of abortion real quick i also believe we are in the we are watching capitalism eat itself <laughs> <laughs> And that's a whole nother episode, I'm sure. But, you know, that is probably what is even more infuriating to me in a daily basis is seeing what we're talking about. These ideas of what is valuable and what we have been holding is valuable and what we have been told is valuable by this cannibalistic <laughs> capitalist system. 
I'm okay with capitalism with a conscious, you know, mm -hmm. of people. I'm all for free trade and for making your own destiny and for making money. I mean, but it can't be at, at the expense of other people. It cannot be. It can't be or at the, the expense planet. of other people of the planet. No, it has yeah. to. You can make your money, but you have to be conscious about it, like you said, and just ethical choices. Gotta be good with it. Don't be. Don't be dicks. Yeah, like moving beyond what is success in business, you know, the rise of the B corporation of being able to have other factors in place as what moves your company other than mm -hmm. just shareholder profits. And yeah. we are seeing, and this also, I think with the, you know, this all ties into the great resignation everybody's talking about, which we'll probably talk about more than another time. Cause we got to wrap this up, but just <laughs> all these things that are pointing to the ugliness and the messiness right now, there is a way through it. And we just have to really stand in our own value. And that's what I hope I can do through human design is show you and show anyone who wants to look at it, your unique part, mm -hmm. what, what you came in here with, what you came here to express, what you came to do. Cause most people know, I mean, once they start getting exposed to it, it's waking up and it's, um, listening to yourself and trusting yourself and stopping this madness of letting other power structures who have no interest in our well-being um mm -hmm. individually stopping that being the decision making and so it's no accident we're here Haley, as women <laughs> in america in 2022 with a voice and a microphone and weird ideas <laughs> we will be heard damn it <laughs> yeah i mean i mean also what a great time to be alive i mean when they fought for a lot of these rights, the suffragettes and the, and the, you know, civil rights movement, they didn't have these platforms we have now, mm -hmm. you know, and to not speak about it, I feel is a failing of your own um, social and ethical and moral responsibility to, yeah. to talk about if we it. Because so. if we don't talk about it, then it just it will continue on. And we can't, yeah. we can't have that. Yeah. You got to stand for something. I say, if you stand, um, if you don't stand for something, you stand for nothing or something like that. No. Oh, oh, hold on. Let me pull it out of <laughs> Hamilton. Hold on. Oh, is that in Hamilton? I what do you, if, oh, come on. Hold on. I know exactly what song it is. <laughs> um, oh, for you, if you stand for nothing, Burr, what do you'll fall? What'll you fall for? Mm. That's what it is. There you go. Aaron Burr, you're referring to from... Yes, it's um, Aaron Burr, sir, from the musical Hamilton, <laughs> oh, my favorite. Yep. This says, if you stand for nothing, Burr, what will you fall for? Yes, that's very poignant. Yeah, got to take a stand. So that's, I just want to get that off my chest today and uh, let everyone out there know that this is, the definitive episode to let you know that yes i have opinions about what's happening in the world yes it shapes what i do and what i think and you may disagree with me and that's okay too um but maybe a listen and learn something from me and i hope to learn something from others mm -hmm. as well but um yeah i think my takeaway from this is it's not hopeless, but it's going to be messy. Exactly. And that's how real growth and lasting change happens is mm -hmm. through the, the struggle <laughs> and realizing what's fighting worth fighting for. And then standing for something <laughs> and yeah. moving through. So this isn't going to be the, uh, uh, political human design podcast, but <laughs> they're probably will definitely, I mean, I can't, I can't help it. I have always no. just been very um, concerned with what's happening in the world and it has shaped and formed me over the years. So let's just say, I'll just, I'll just throw this little nugget out there. <laughs> when I was in high school, I did help found the, uh, uh, shit, what's it called? 
the amnesty oh, the the local high school chapter of amnesty international which i have was, no idea what that is there was three of us in the group i think because i went to a catholic high school in ohio Wait, that's still a group you graduated with what like 10 people a <laughs> hundred <laughs> amnesty international is the group that basically fights for human rights around the world and um are they still around yes organization of 7 million supporters activists and volunteers in over 150 countries with complete independence from government corporate or national interests mm -hmm. maybe i should log into this yeah um of course top issue on their page right now is roe v wade um <laughs> so yeah it was it was very big it was kind of formed in the 80s and it came around like apartheid and all this other stuff but basically defending human rights around the world working to protect people wherever justice freedom truth and dignity are denied Ooh. says amnesty international Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. heater so yeah i uh my myself and two or three other friends in high school That's a group. Were like we <laughs> i couldn't fit into any other clubs in school <laughs> so i made one <laughs> your catholic high school yeah yeah needless to say a lot of those kids back in the 80s on the west side of columbus and the catholic high school didn't give two shits about what i had to say but you know what i'm used to that <laughs> well you were quite a rebel for a catholic high school yeah but anyway so i think we have rambled today a little bit here at the end but anyway so that's what's been on my mind that's what i wanted to talk about and I think it's also a good segue to, you know, lay the groundwork that we are going to be talking a lot more in the future of this podcast about belief systems and what we mm -hmm. personally believe and, and mindset and how to go about, um, which is what human design helps you so clearly almost like fast forward and hack into is where are your um, things that, you know, helps you see where these conditioning belief conditioned beliefs are and and how you can work with that and and change your um story and your narrative and which helps empower yourself which helps that ripple effect outward so mm -hmm. that's it for today so any last thoughts on that my dear this was needed i like this one thank you i thought you would good choice thank you and so uh, we appreciate everybody listening today and um, we'll be back next week with some more nuggets of information, guidance, whatever it is you need. I'm sure it will be there next week for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so it is. All right, babe. I love you and have a good rest of your day. So yeah. Bye. Bye. You made it all the way to the end of today's episode, so you must have liked what you heard. If you did, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode, and perhaps leave us a good review. And if you know someone who wants to dig into all things human design with us, make sure you share the Human Design Hive podcast with them. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks for listening. <laughs>